Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist with a plant science minor and in this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants and in today's video, we're talking about foliar feeding and this foliar feeding concept applies to both house plants and to garden plants. So we're gonna be going through the science to foliar feeding, whether or not it works, why it does work in some cases, why it doesn't work in other cases, whether or not you can make it at home, we're just going into all the details. So this is a video that some of you requested. If you did not know, I post Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays at one o'clock central time every single week, like clockwork. I have not missed a day in a year. And so if you like the sounds, be sure to hit that subscribe button, but also leave me recommendations down below for what videos you want to see. Obviously with posting as many videos as I am, I need ideas because it's a lot of videos in a year. So be, don't shy away from sending me any sort of message. I answer every single comment, mean or nice. They all get a response. Some, the mean ones get a bit of a snotty response, but as long as you're nice, you get a nice response. So this one I also posted on the Gardening in Canada website. Go check that out, you guys. Um, it's a blog website hybrid type thing where I'm posting printable sheets that you guys can print out and put in a binder somewhere. They're free, which basically goes through the concepts that we talked about in the video, the highlights that you need to know, gives you a little note section to write down notes, all that fun stuff. So be sure to check that out. I also have, I, there's a ton of resources on there. It's really, it's building up some meat onto it over time. So check that out. So let's jump into foliar sprays or for foliar fertilization, exactly what it is. So foliar feeding was actually developed in the 1980s and it was developed through a scientific study that was done on feeding foliarly. Fol fol foliar, foliar feeding, I don't know. What's the verb to that? I don't know. But anyways, so what happened was some scientists got together and they decided to put plants in nutrient deficient soil and then feed it through spray. So they are spraying it onto leaves to see if any at all nutrients was taken up through the leaf. Turns out nutrient was taken up through the leaf, specifically through those stomata organs that we talk about all the time. We know they're integral to both photosynthesis and respiration, but turns out they also are able to take up tiny minute amounts of nutrients. So this spurred an economic boom in foliar feeding. A lot of companies saw this, they saw dollar signs for lack of a better term, and they decided to jump on it. So they developed foliar feeding sprays that mostly were geared toward micronutrient because the studies showed that micronutrients were more so what was being able to be taken up more so than macronutrients. So nitrogen, potassium, and phosphorus weren't too much of the highlight for what was taken up just because it's needed in such large amounts. While some was taken up, the molecules themselves are a little bit too large. It was more so seen in things like iron uptake, manganese uptake. Um, I think I saw on the one study there was calcium, magnesium, manganese, iron. I think there were small amounts of sulfur. Like there's a huge list of nutrients that are able to be taken up through the stomata. So because of this initial study done in the 1980s and then this big boom of companies capitalizing on the study, subsequent peer reviews come, came out after that and they still come out to this day. So the subsequent studies that were reviewing or critiquing the initial hypothesis and results kind of refined it a bit better for us. And the result on all these other studies it turns out that the foliar feeding works in very specific scenarios. So if we have a plant that is in a proper soil that is not stressed out and the soil is not nutrient deficient, foliar feeding doesn't do much because the plant is getting everything it needs from the soil. So foliar feeding actually can be a detriment to the plant because it can end up in 
over application because we're using the stomata instead of the normal passive or active transport systems within the roots. So the plant can't differentiate between stomata uptake and root uptake. It's just going to do its normal exudate, release, passive, active transport, osmosis. Like it's just going to continue taking the nutrients in through the roots while you're simultaneously putting nutrient in through the leaves. So it's a bit too much in a healthy plant in a healthy soil. However, this is where the interesting part comes. Foliar feeding did wonders for plants that are stressed out, specifically plants that had root issues. So not so much foliage issues such as disease or pest issues on the foliage, but if the roots were in trouble, so this could be root rot, this could be transplant shock, this could be anything, the, the pot getting tipped over and knocked over and you damaged some root hairs, that sort of thing. So if the roots are under stress and you foliarly feed the plant, you will see results. Same thing conversely goes with if you have a soil uh, pH that is poor or, for, or an oversaturated soil. Say you had some flooding for an instance or you overwatered for instance and those roots are in an anaerobic scenario. They don't have the proper levels of oxygen to be able to allow for transport into the roots. If that is the case, foliar feeding is your fix. So chlorosis is very common after an intense rainfall, for example. So this would be a time to foliarly feed your plants. Now, the other scenario where they found that this worked was in nutrient depleted soil. And this is a very specific. So it wasn't just, uh, I think my soil is nutrient depleted, my plant is acting kind of funny. This was specific to high production fields. So farmers fields, that were intensively farmed. So some, in some cases, some parts of the world, two to three crops within a 12 month period. Those cases or those scenarios were ones that benefited from foliar feeding, mostly because we, I'd assume the farmers aren't applying enough fertilizer or enough organic material. Just the soil is, it's wasted. It's just done. So this is the other scenario that foliar feeding worked in. So. With that being said, if we know foliar feeding works to a degree and it works specifically on plants that are not doing too well, how do we feed? Like, can we make this stuff at home? How does this stuff work? So like I said, the initial study caused the products or the production companies of these fertilizer chemicals to go into overdrive to produce foliar feeding um, stuff, products. And so with those products, they did numerous amounts of tests and ultimately there were spin-off tests done by actual scientists that showed if you were just to mix a liquid fertilizer in water, say, and then spray it on the leaves, that won't work. The main reason being is that because plant leaves naturally are hydrophobic, that's why you see the little balls of water on, on the outside of your plant, because that epidermis has the epiticular wax that we talked about in a video not too long ago. So that wax ultimately will not allow the product or the nutrient to stay on the surface of the leaf. And we need that surface contact to be around long enough that those stomata are able to open, the guard cells open, allowing that nutrients to flow into the plant. So because we aren't mother nature and we can't engineer well, I'm sure we could, but we can engineer plants to open their guard cells at the time when we foliar feed. We need something to help keep it on the leaf. So just mixing a normal fertilizer or a compost tea or a manure or anything for that matter in water and spraying it on the leaves, it's honestly, it's not going to do anything. And the studies have shown that you need some sort of a surfactant in there to help it hold to the leaf which brings up another point because these products have surfactants in them so if you were to buy a foliar feeding product it if it's a good product it will have a surfactant in it which will help this stuff cling to the leaves because this stuff is clinging to the leaves and going against the natural uh, processing of the plant which involves being hydrophobic we do run the risk of potentially 
burning those leaves by just having salts on the surface of the leaf for too long because in most cases these are going to be inorganic forms of fertilizer if you guys have watched my videos before i explain organic fertilizers and why the numbers are so low and ultimately it goes down to bioavailability and how much of that fertilizer at a given time is available for uptake with natural fertilizers or organic fertilizers we need the aid of microbes in a lot of cases to degrade that material and allow for nutrient cycles to take place for it to be bioavailable for plant uptake foliar feeding we are working directly with the base elements so that we can deliver the product in a usable manner to that plant. If you choose to use a miracle Grow, for example, mix it up in solution, spray it on the leaves, it's not gonna work. You won't burn your leaves because you don't have it sitting on the leaf, but it's just simply not going to work. That's why when we water plants overhead, it's, you're not fully you're feeding, you're just feeding the soil. So you need a surfactant in place to hold it and let it allow it to cling to the leaves. So you can apply this anytime. You can apply it during the day or you can apply it during night. The main thing is that the water doesn't sit on the leaf for too, too long. And this is because of the salt factor. Now you can apply during the day. I went over and debunked, I think last year sometime, the whole idea of water droplets amplifying the sun and burning plant leaves. It's, it's not a thing guys, sorry, it's not. But that won't happen. So you can do it in the daytime or the nighttime, but you're probably going to want to go for an inorganic format. As much as I appreciate organic products, I personally use organic products. There's just no guarantee that that is going to be uptaken into that stomata. And a lot of the research is done purely on inorganic products, most likely due to the fact that these people, these scientists already know inorganic, unless it's like base molecular structures, isn't going to be uptaken properly. So there you guys have it. You officially know everything about foliar feeding. The fact that it is very real and it works on specific plants, such as plants that are sick root wise or in a poor soil scenario. For most of us gardeners and houseplant people, we are looking at more so a poor root system, which would be the result of a nutrient deficiency, rather than looking at production issues because we aren't intensively cropping. So we're probably more so the first scenario. We also know that the science supports foliar feeding so long as there is a surfactant in the product. And we wanna to try to stay away from inorganic as much as possible because organic, again, in most cases, not all, but in most cases, is not in the proper format for uptake. I will leave an Amazon link down below for you guys to check out if you want to grab a foliar feed that I've read over the ingredients and I can give a thumbs up approval on. You guys can grab that. Other than that, let me know in the comments down below if you use foliar feeding, how you do it, if you do a homemade version or not. Now you can do a homemade version. I just, you just have to add um, like soap. Honestly, that's all, literally all you have to add is just a soap. That would be enough to just help it cling to leaves a little bit longer. Give this video a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.